All right, everyone. Welcome. Welcome back to the Foss Waterway Seaport. Um, so we are here today for some virtual touch tank explorations. And what we're going to do is I have some things set up for you here. So as you can see, I've put some of our phyla, which is basically just what scientists like to do is put animals into categories. They think that that is really fun. So I have some of the categories listed here and we're gonna look at some of our animals and then try to put them into categories. So we're gonna start with this guy right over here. So this is something very cool looking. Does anybody know what this is? You can type in the chat. What kind of animal is this? What does this look like? I'll give you some hints. It could be a sea star. Oh, tarantula. That is a really good guess, Skyla. It does look a lot like a tarantula. In fact, they're in the same family. So this guy is actually called a heart crab. It's a type of crab. So crabs fall into this family over here, which is an arthropod. So arthropods have a segmented body, which we'll talk about in a minute, and jointed legs. So if we go back over here to our crab, you can see that the crab, like my finger, can bend its legs, right? So that means that the legs are jointed. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and we don't have a heart crab, but we'll just grab a crab here and we're gonna put crabs up with arthropods. Okay, so let's head on over to this guy. So I just told you, what kind of crab is this? Does anybody know? It's a special kind of crab that uses a shell to protect itself. So this is a hermit crab and it's particularly a bearing hermit crab. So a hermit crab is also an arthropod with jointed legs, a segmented body, right? We have lots of other crabs in here as well. I'm gonna show you a really big one, which is right down over here. Now, this is a helmet crab. She'll bite me if I'm not careful. Oh, look, she's busy eating. So this is a helmet crab who I call Gracie. And she is eating something right now. She's eating something from a different phyla. So we'll come back to her in a minute because she's pretty busy. But you can see, try to shield the camera here. You can see her jointed legs, right? So arthropods, a spider. They're all very similar. So that was a great guests there, Skyla. Ooh, looks like everybody's very busy eating over here. So the next one I'm going to talk about are the mollusks because that's what Gracie is eating. So we have a few mollusks in here. So as you can see, mollusks have some special characteristics. One of them is that they have a mantle which is basically a muscular foot that they can use to move around, or it's a part, a soft part that comes out of their shell. And they often have a shell. So we have some mussels right here. Now these are a great example of a mollusk. This is a special kind of a mollusk called a bivalve. And its foot actually comes out of the back here. And that's one of the ways besides these bissel threads that it attaches to the rocks. See if I can get one a little bit closer for you. I'm gonna pick this up. Okay, there we go. So these threads right here that look like little pieces of string, the muscle spits those out and that's how it anchors to the rock. But if it were to come off, it actually has a muscular foot that comes out and it can sort of use that to walk around and find a new place to go. Oh, look what we found under there, another arthropod. There's a little crab. He's pretty mad. Here, put this back, we don't wanna smush him. 
Here you go, buddy. Okay, so we have lots of different animals inside the tanks. There's another arthropod over there, that little crab. So let's go here. And we're going to put the mussels in the mollusk. Sorry, here we go. And I should mention, I have a colleague that's on as well that is somewhere else and is monitoring the chat to help answer the questions. Okay. So next, let's talk about these guys because we're going to be able to feed them over here. Now that is really beautiful looking. Does anybody know what that big green thing is? You can type in the chat if you think you know what it is. I have an orange one here as well. It's something that you see in Finding Nemo. Nemo lives in one of these. I'm sure you're all yelling it out and I can't hear you. But this is an anemone. Anemone. So we're going to look back over here. Which one of these? do we think an anemone is? Well, it's kind of hard to tell because that's a lot of big words, but I want to show you guys this thing right here, stinging nemeticis. So the anemone is a cnidarian and it has stinging cells. And I'm going to show you these right there. They're actually kind of like harpoons. So I'm going to feed the anemone here and you're going to see it grab onto the food. Now, this food isn't really very alive, uh, but the anemone doesn't know that. So the anemone actually has in each of those tentacles, tiny little microscopic harpoons called nemeticis. So, and what happens is if this food were alive, the anemone fires its little harpoons out of those tentacles and grabs onto the food. So that's one of the characteristics of a cnidarian. A coral is also a cnidarian. Now, if, if you live in the Pacific Northwest, you've probably seen a lot of these, especially in the spring and summer. This is a moon jellyfish. Again, with those stinging nemeticis, they all have them. Some of them have them on tentacles. Uh, most of them have them on tentacles. Some of them are big tentacles, like on the anemones, and some of them are thin and wispy, like on a jellyfish. So that goes here in the cnidarians, all right? So let's do a little bit more feeding here. So these ones in the back, these ones are called, their scientific name is Stumphia. And what's pretty cool about these is that they have a natural predator that I'm keeping in this other tank right over here because we wouldn't want to keep them next to each other, right? So these leather stars actually will eat that anemone. Now it looks like that anemone stuck to the rock pretty good, right? Doesn't look like that's coming off of there. No. But actually when threatened, this whole thing along the bottom there is kind of like a suction cup and they'll let go and start stomping around, kind of swimming. You can look up a video of that if you want. Stompia stomping away. And it is pretty cool. We, we don't want to torture our animals, so I'm not going to show you that. In fact, we're going to put this one right back into its home. This one lives in this tank where nobody else can hurt it. All right, and we're going to move on to another classification, okay? So we've talked about the cnidarians with those stinging nemeticis or harpoons. And we've talked about the arthropods that a lot of them look like spiders, right? And we've talked a little bit about mollusks as well. So I'm gonna show you another kind of mollusk, if I can find him. Right over here. Actually, ooh, look at that. What is happening there? So this is another type of cnidarian. Remember with the stinging cells? And I'll try to sh shield the glare for you a little bit. But so that thing that looks like it's gooey and ripping apart, that's exactly what is happening. It is so cool. So this is 
an anemone right here. The scientific name is my favorite name, Anthropleura elegantissima, otherwise known as the aggregating anemone. And what they, one of the ways that they make more anemones is by literally ripping themselves in half, which is crazy. And that's what you can see happening down there. It's been going on for, gosh, almost a week now. And those two anemones, when they're, when the other one is born, are genetically similar. Uh, identical, I'm sorry, not similar. So these are also cnidarian. And they have something called bilateral symmetry. So symmetry is basically how things are the same. So I'm going to go back to my face for you. So most people's faces are at least somewhat symmetrical. So if I cut my face in half like this, divided it in two, this half would be almost the same or symmetrical to this half, okay? And that type of symmetry is called bilateral or two, bilateral symmetry. Now, but some of our creatures down here, like these anemones, and some others aren't really bilaterally symmetri symmetrical. They're symmetrical in a circle. And that, if we go back over here, under this one is radial symmetry. And that means symmetrical like a circle, like a wheel, okay? Nidarians, most of them are symmetrical like a wheel, but some of them are like my face and they can be divided in two, okay? And if anybody has any questions, feel free to ask them there. Oh, looks like, just check the chat. Okay, so echinoderms, we're gonna move on to them. We've talked, if you've come to some of our classes before, we do a whole class called Super Sea Stars about echinoderms. So I don't wanna spend too much time on them since some of you already know. So we can test your knowledge a little bit. So echinoderm means spiny skin. We're gonna go over here to this tank. And there is something right there, classic echinoderm, with very, very spiny skin. And those spines are sharp, ouch. Okay, so echinoderms, as we've talked about, means spiny skin. Echinoderms, here's a whole bunch more of them. Sea stars and sea urchins are in the same family. They're cousins, right? We've been talking a lot about this if you've been following any of our earlier broadcasts with the touch tanks. So these things, these sea stars and the sea urchin, all have radial symmetry, which is symmetry like a wheel. Aren't they beautiful? And then we have somebody else that's also in that family. He likes to live right up here. This is a sea cucumber, okay? The sea cucumber is also symmetrical like a wheel, if you looked at it this way. Here's another one right down here. Okay, and the, the last thing that they all have are tube feet. Let me see if anyone's got some good tube feet out for you to see. Here we go. All those little tiny things that look like tentacles, those are not tentacles. Those are actually tube feet. And that is how this guy moves. He doesn't have a big muscular foot or mantle like the mollusks do. Instead, they have hundreds or even thousands on the big ones of little tube feet. So now we're looking at the underside of this sea star. And this sea star is busy. Right there in the middle, that's his stomach. And in his stomach, in his mouth, I'm sorry, that's his mouth, is a muscle, which is pretty cool. So it wouldn't be a very good idea to take the sea stars from this tank and put them in here because they would eat all these beautiful mussels. Now, if I can find a close up, here we go. Growing on those mussels is something that is very common to see. It's white and it has a shell. And I have some really, really big ones over here. But let's stop for a minute here and catch up with ourselves. Okay, so we know that. The crabs go with the arthropods. 
Okay. And we know that the sea cucumber is a kinoderm, right? The sea stars are echinoderms. And now we're going to talk about barnacles, okay? Now, barnacles are tricky. Can be a little bit confusing to people what they might be because they kind of look like a mollusk, right? It has a shell. Maybe it moves around. It's actually not. A barnacle is considered an arthropod. Now, where are the segmented legs, you ask? The jointed legs, that just looks like a, something in a weird shell. So barnacles are really, really cool. And here's a giant one that's open right here. Now it's just closing. Let me see if I can find somebody that's feeding. But basically, if you were able to look really up close at a barnacle, Coming out of that shell, where the little opening is right there, is these kind of feathery looking, they're the feet of the barnacles, basically. And that's how it eats. So a barnacle is in the same family, see how good this magnet is, nope, as a crab. Which most people, don't realize, doesn't look much like a spider, does it? But they are the same, all right? Now, we don't have any sand dollars, but see how the sand dollar has that sea star pattern on it? Have you ever noticed that? They are also an echinoderm. They are all in the same family. All right, guys, it looks like that is most of the time that we have for today. Ah, a few more minutes. Okay, so let's see who's hungry. Let's go over here and talk more about our sea urchins. So this is what happens after a sea urchin dies. This is called a sea urchin test, T-E-S-T-E-S. -E -E and you find these washed up on the beach sometimes, and you can see where the spines used to come out. And if you had the whole thing, you could again see that sea star looking pattern on um, the inside or the outside. So here's a live sea star. I mean, urchin, I'm sorry. And sea urchins are like cows. They're the grazers of the sea. They like to eat plants. So this is a piece of kelp. Or, no, well, sort of. Let's, it's, we'll just call it kelp. It also looks a lot like ulva or sea lettuce if I had picked this out of the water, which I did not. So, if we were very patient, we put this down here, and eventually this guy will use his tube feet, which are all over the top of his body, and take that and draw it towards his mouth, which is pretty cool. All right, does anybody have any more questions before we sign off until later when we will be doing a preschool program with our trains exhibit, which is something we haven't tried before. Before we go, I'll show you our cute little sculpin swimming around over here. This is another anemone we have, the strawberry anemone. Also very beautiful. Now, it didn't sting me, thank goodness, because those little nematocyst harpoons can't pierce through human skin. Of course, we always need to be very careful. All right, well, thank you all for joining us. Check our website for our next broadcast, and we will see you soon. Have a great day, and stay safe out there.